a leer Okay, I'll read this brief document. Cross-sectionality, it is the main idea to defend human rights. Guarantees in this sense should embrace different fields in the, of the life of citizens, and the state should take charge together with organization and social movements to make human rights tangible and are not do not remain the pure declarations black over white. Will the grandmothers of the May of Square can have something to say in that regard from the experience that we've been building over these 36 years, the right of identity? It was long ago when the society treated us as insane people and ignoring our claims at a time where dictators had enjoyed full impunity. Well, in the last military coup d'etat, ever since then, our democracy has been strengthened and the fight for human rights uh, became more and more visible. Now, the search for justice in cases of crimes against humanity, it is on the public agenda. Uh, we are claiming and um, wanted to know the truth about what happened in many years ago. It took us more than th three decades to see the results of the work that we've been con conducted. So today, we can see the success and the achievement of this collective work that contribute to the building the state of law. Our law together with the with our fight together with the fight from other human rights association has facilitated the state of law for all the citizens. We managed to see the creation of the bank of genetic data that ensures the faithfulness of the connection of us with the grandson that we are looking for. We are promoters of past peace and of social awareness. So today, the military coup, uh, what he, or the coup from 1976, is studied, is taught at the schools. Everyone should learn about human rights. Since 2003 up until today, state policies have proven the firm decision to know the truth and to recover the memory that the countries need in peace, in solidarity, respecting the other, and repairing the rights that have been taken away from the minorities. Human rights are just state policy, but state policy. Well, I've mentioned the bank, DNA bank created by the parliament on 1997, and well, included in the law in 2009. So we've been claiming the right for identity to ensure the, our identity that are included or stated under the Convention for the Right of Children. We proposed them before the United Nations, and they have always been the basis for the legislation on adoption. So all these themes have been included into the school curricula, primary school, secondary school, as well as university studies. Justice adapted its practices to this problem and listened to the needs of the victims and the relatives. The parliament, as well as other as laws leading to the protection and the right to identity on the 22nd of October, has declared 22nd of October after the uh, International Day of the Right to Identity as the day to celebrate the right to identity. When it comes to fostering legislation in terms of adoption, we've seen how that the right to identity has become a sacred right and a first rank right, both for individuals and for the state, that the state should be always be aware of. Here in Spain, well, the, stolen, the issue of stolen babies during the Franco's time is on the table. Actually, an Argentinian judge has taken care of this issue based on universal justice. And the claimants have been listened after many years. At that time, grandmothers went to 
came to these tribunals or to the Rome courts because we were not listened in our own in our country. So today we have an interconnected world. Communication has advanced significantly. This is a relief for us. At the time of the dictatorship, we used to leave the country or walk come back to the country with papers hidden under our clothes because we wanted to let the world know what was known what was happening about in Argentina so that they could help us nowadays we can <coughs> respond better to the injustices <laughs> However, it is not possible to think about public policies, ensuring and guarantee and human rights if there is no justice in place. <coughs> if we do not resolve these crimes that were, that were committed in the past, will prevail in the present and in the future. That's the case also with some babies from France's regime. So far, they are still victims to the lie. They can't be free. It is as if they were still abducted and their family members were still in the uncertainty, knowing that we have this loved one who doesn't know who he is, who his or her parents were, siblings, cousins, uncles and aunts. And that's what we grandmothers keep working on, to have them all taken back to their real families that were taken away as a, as a treasure after a war. Many of these kids accompany us in, in the struggle and are the ones who are willing to keep working once we are gone to guarantee the continuity of our struggle. And so we have the satisfaction to know that all the achievements we have the satisfaction of all the achievements in these 37 years of hard work. Many of these achievements, we see them in the education system, in new laws that have been enforced, and also in the structure and functioning of our state, but especially we see them in the awareness and the conscience of our citizens. I would like now to refer to this topic in question, which is justice, which is paramount. As, as mothers and grandmothers of the May Square, we have a, a lot to say. Over three decades ago, the dictatorship took our kids and grandkids away from us. And ever since, we've been relentlessly looking for them, always using all the institutional means that were available. The judiciary was an unavoidable tool in, in the task, and there were some prosecutors and judges who were stubborn enough to hinder our search and our quest. Some others show their solidarity and understanding to us, and we saw how they reasonably did their role as public officials. But beyond from individuals, we've seen the vices and the structural defects, uh, defects of the legal power and the judiciary. And we learned a few lessons that I would like to share here. One of the first things that we learned was that we would never see the faces of those judges, and judges would never see our faces. We would no know anything about from them, about from their names. We could not convey our pain, our thought. We should communicate through lawyers and lots of papers. This change to some extent, but this change needs to be even deeper. We claim that the judiciary needs to be visible for society in all regards, that these topics that are of common interest need to be solved as public hearings. So that victims are not to explain the pain over and over again before legal experts that are just taking notes, but before the judges, before the society, they also, judges need to explain the foundation of their decisions in a simple manner. We've also learned firsthand that we had to understand the timing, the times and schedule of justice. Those times could be years or even decades sometimes, trying to have a grandmother recover her grandkid, because there was always a new appeal, there was always a new law that would stop them from meeting their grandkids. And we see that these tools are just over and over again trying to prevent the enforcement of the key laws for democracy. We want to have a fast track legal democracy because if justice is too slow, it's no justice at all. 
over the years, we've also seen how judges appoint their people without any kind of control just because of their ideology or personal connection. And we saw how some courts were full of friends and family members that were all part of the social rank which were a bit elitist and deepened the separation between them and working class that needs to resort to justice because their rights have been compromised. We want to have a fair and competent access to the legal power where human rights, is, uh, human rights are respected. We cannot forget that there were still judges that were appointed by a dictator or under the dictatorship and follow the dictatorship. It's not about which hand in. That's not what we want. We know that even back then there were a few who tried to resist and had personal harassment. But those that were accessory to crimes need to be prosecuted. Nine years after the opening of these uh, uh, trials for crimes against Humanity, there's only one former judge that has been judged, that has been convicted, and the accessory people and the accomplices need to be taken from office. These questions need to be present in the discussion nowadays because these are part of the legitimacy of justice. The enforcement of judgment will always be legitimate and lawful if it guarantees that human rights are enforced. The justice under dictatorship that would systematically refuse the habeas corpus request in many cases would also replace justice. That justice was unlawful, was illegitimate, but it also becomes unlawful when we have a justice that takes decades and decades to prosecute uh, perpetrators of genocide, that turns its back uh, on uh, citizens that forgets about the least favors and, uh, favored and only remembers the least favor when they are to be incarcerated. And as I said at the beginning, over the years, we've also learned how the judiciary has very valuable people, people who are invested and committed to human rights. And here we have Judge Zaffaroni as an example here in Spain. Many people are worried because things might change, because the judiciary justice need to be synonymous to mean the same. They, you have the full support of the mothers of the May Square, but, but it's not that we will accompany you. It's not just that. We want you to keep working, to persevere and be coherent with your decisions because it's not about your personal future, but it's about the strength and quality of the democracy that we built together. These wishes that I convey on behalf of all the mothers of the May Square, I want to convey here to this country, to Spain. Thank you very much. World. So there's another question having to do with experience in the search for stolen babies. And this question is, asks for advice. For families in Spain, looking for kids, especially for, for kids that are adults now, and they are looking for their origins, what should they do? And they have kind of a specific question. And in, in Spain, we all trust labs, private labs, and even the uh, drug lab here in, in Spain but how can they overcome such a lack of confidence? What are, what they should do? Well, I think it is more to say about uh, what they are doing already, because we are talking about the grandkids of those murdered by Franco's regime. And a few years ago, a lot of years ago, we were with another grandmother in Barcelona at a conference, uh, and there were a few young people approaching us, telling that they were grand kids that the grandparents had been murdered by Franco's regime, but they wanted to find the re remains to honor them, and they wanted our advice as grandmothers. I, we told them to group, to have an association that had some kind of legal entity and social entity, and have a DNA bank, data bank, with relatives, and as bodies are found, because they say, OK, um, Probably my grandfather is buried there because my grandmother carries flowers there, but she wouldn't say anything. There were some exhumations. 
And well, I think they've found hundreds of victims of Franco's regime and they've had a proper burial. And we, Grand Mothers, apart from this uh, claim where we are claimants ourselves, and that's why Mr. Uh, Mr. Vini is here with all the institutions. There's this group of uh, relatives and family members who are seeking in, uh, in, in a quest for truth and for justice. Since they don't have it here, well, they go to Argentina. And this is our uh, token of gratitude for everything that we got from Spain in the topic that we've discussed after Justice Garzón's intervention and after everything they promoted and when Chilinga was found here. Well, and then grandkids. These kids, now we've seen that there are over 35,000 kids who were victims of Franco's regime. Uh, in the past, they would say, there are no stolen kids, and the, the case in Argentina was something genetic because it was savage. The pregnant woman stay alive until the baby was born, and then the pregnant woman was killed. And then here, kids were stolen, but We've seen that there have been organized groups of young women who are now 40-something. I don't remember the name. Soledad, Soledad Lucas, that's right. She came to us to see how we could help them develop this idea. So they are taking steps. There is no miracle recipe. There's not one, there's not a silver bullet. In Latin America, we do it like this. We, Argentina, we are the pioneers, we are the flagship of human rights, um, they all have their own timing. Spain needs to find its own timing and its methodology. And I think you will find your own methodology because I think this Jew that is fighting what's happened, and apart from the past, they have an uncertain present because of the crisis. And I think they need to formally defend their own homeland. You yourself recommendation would be to add visibility to the topic so that the society is there. But maybe, as it happens in Argentina nowadays, you will have a problem with the, with the press. Because it, it's better to have a press monopoly. But no, that's not the case. This goes against the wishes of those people who want to find the truth for these stories. And this needs to be made clear. There were not two demons in Argentina. There was just one that was a terrorist state imposed by the armed forces and their uh, accomplices. A few days ago, there was an initiative for human rights teaching in school. How should it be done? In Spain, they didn't teach what happened under Franco's regime. How can you teach that in Argentina? How can you teach human rights in Argentina what happened in the 70s in our country? I always talk about grandmothers. Each body has its dynamism, its forms and shapes. We grandmothers work a lot with the Ministry of Education. Motu proprio. And because of our own activities, we visit schools quite often, both primary school, secondary school, and college. We go to, to small campuses, small um, towns, and tell them they should fight and struggle for democracy. We teach them coexistence, respect for others, peace, training, which somehow it's changing the monopoly of the press that show those crimes that, that, that happened just once as if they were happening three, four, ten times. So people are talking about that. They're pushing the buttons in the society to an extent that we've, we've seen that it's necessary to work with even kindergarten. Because there you can find the kids of our grandparents. Those would be our great, sorry, grandkids. So they are great grandkids of us, maybe, who knows. And you can use new technologies and have a respectful conversation. And as for education and the ministry, we've got phones and we've got teaching materials and we've got a leaflet 
uh, fool the teacher to broadcast it because teachers need to be trained as well because I'm t sometimes you know how to explain what happened because they have not even understood it. Uh, the dictatorship touched us all and uh, we need to educate um, law enforcement and we need to train them and sometimes we go to the prison uh, or we go to air forces and, and teach them because they are young people. And, and they need to hear it from someone they will believe because people do not believe it. If you are running for president and you used to be democratic and now you say that when that they will release all people in prison, all convicts, it is concerning, it's worrying. So we need to clarify how society is divided and who, who's accountable for what so that by 2015, when we need to decide our landscape, we need to have a clear idea. And so we respect that the person is less no matter who he or she is. But we need to keep an eye on it. This part of, of training is very important. We heard about training and Spain yesterday. Nobody, there's some people who won't even admit it was a dictatorship. It happens in Argentina. When crimes were penalized, were criminalized, there were people who thought that it was an intermediate military plan, which is a weird definition. That is that the Argentinian uh, military group attacked the Argentinian people. Uh, it's not the way it was. So, in school, what about Filmenich role? Well, I don't have the need to teach that. That has been written. There are many books written on what happened in the 70s. Armed conflict, yes, but it was annihilated. And where the army came in, they were just a minority. They were just a group of people. So you are telling me a figure or a character that should defend himself because he's alive, same as many other survivors to the killing. There are many other happy survivors. Here we have examples of prisoners, uh, political prisoners. There are survivors. We, they are working on the topic, and they have gone through that awful experience. So the figure, that figure has been like the scapegoat, like if he had been the worst of the worst. But actually, he is there to stand up and to say what happened. That is written on the book. He was a colleague. He was a mate of my sons. Well, he instructed young people to kill people. But don't bring out the theory of the two demons, because I'm not going to answer to that. But please resolve that or discuss that in a different forum. So your doubts are not my doubts, your concern. Well, I don't have any doubts. I have certainties about his crimes. I'm not talking about two demons. But I'm surprised that you raising that topic to me here at this forum. Well, I found the way, the path to follow. So one more minute for Stella. So she is the person who has, has the greatest and longest experience in bringing a, or defending a cause. Who were the key factors, the key players that helped you fight in your struggle and reach the success that you Well, we at the time of the dictatorship could not speak out. We used to meet in a clandestine manner, like if we were celebrating or we're having a party. We used to write letters to the Pope, to anyone that was likely to help us. And then we used to approach the, well, the top. Uh, the top people at the church, and unfortunately, they, it was found out later on that they were complices of the dictatorship. We also approached our French countries, such as Spain and France, 
Canada and the U.S., well, some well formal communities in Canada and the U.S. welcomed us, received us. Canada helped us disseminate what we were doing, this helped us disseminate what was, what was happening in Argentina. Also in Spain, Amnesty International, as well as the United Nations seat at the New York. So here we, were talk we are talking about uh, established uh, bodies. So in Italy, Pertini, the president, received us. In France, Lacat, Madame Mitterrand. Endless number of people, of well-known people who supported us, who protected us, because we were very inconvenient. And actually, we were likely to or prone to disappear. Actually, in 1977, some mothers were, were, were disappeared, made, were made to disappear. Were we afraid of? Oh, yes, of course, we were really scared. But every day, we came up with a new thing to do in the country and outside of our country. Let me give you an example. Whenever the Clarín newspaper published the news where well, five guerrilla people died in a clash. The five guerrilla people were mother, the father, and two children. Well, the third one, the baby, was not killed by, but stolen. That is the Anufu case, Miranda Lanufu. These were, these were the piece of news that were published. Whenever we wanted to publish a piece of news on the newspaper, we had to pay lots of money. Then what we wrote down was censored, and we really needed to show a certificate from our district police station, you know, including our address, telephone number. So we were just identified. So that was, that is 37 years ago. So we continue to receive the empathy and solidarity from the same countries, true and honest solidarity. These were our, they were our external help. And then, well, in, inside people say, well, I am afraid, I have not been a victim, don't look at it. If you look at it, you will be a loser, you will lose out. Well, we fight, we fought against all that.